guys and welcome back to another episode of Marvel Card Collecting and Investing. This is going to be a completely random episode, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I just wanted to do something, um, just to show a little bit about how to use ComC. I am by no means any expert, but you know, if you've watched some of my content, there are steals to be had, there are bargains to be had in my humble opinion as always this is completely speculative you should always do your own research this is more about the investing side but again this appeals to the collectors too in terms of getting bargains and stuff like that uh, and literally i haven't planned anything on this on this episode so run with me uh, we'll look at comp c because i think it's a great tool in my opinion it's a massively uh, helpful tool for me being in the uk and uh, I avoid shipping costs and things like that. Obviously, I still have to get it shipped back to me eventually if I want the cards physically. But it's a great way to um, to amass some nice cards. And really, in terms of investment, you can you can you can get some clever you can do some clever deals, and uh, you can really make it work for you. So let me just go through kind of my thought process and uh, <laughs> this is by no means what you should do but I'm just showing you like some some things that I do on a regular basis just to see what's out there what's happening with prices and just see if there's anything that I can scoop up I don't want to spend a lot of money uh, I don't have a lot of money <laughs> therefore I'm picking up some of the bargains when when I see them on eBay auctions buy it now new listings come see because uh, that's just the way that I roll. It doesn't mean you, you're the same, but that's what I'm doing. So, let's take Star-Lord. And first tip, <laughs> always sign in. <laughs> you can see, and this is why I wanted to do it. I have $13 credit on my account. Um, <laughs> and I think this is quite a funny one. Because what can I get with $13 that's going to be worth investing in or even for my collection my pc uh that i can get for a good deal you know so i've typed in star lord and you can see there there's a number of different listings and i guess i'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs if you don't know how to use ComC, hopefully this gives you some value this is why i do these episodes guys to bring you guys value this isn't for my own uh my own good this is hopefully to bring you something i pray <laughs> um so what i do first of all and there's loads of different ways you can play it. I go by print run. Um, so the thing that's going to come up first are going to be printing plates, which obviously are one of one, which again, these are, you know, Marvel annual printing plates. And then you're going to get the sketch cards come up too. But the important thing with that is um, you can see what the serial numbers are. And, and that's really interesting for me because... If I'm buying any Marvel cards uh, at the moment, it is most likely to be a serial numbered card. I'm not going to beat around the bush. That's just what I like to do. And you, you may be different. You may be a sketch card guy. You may be, uh, you know, you may be a printing plate guy. You know, it doesn't matter. But that's just the way I do it. So you can see here, Star Lord. You know, I talked about Star Lord as a my uh, one of my favourite characters in terms of collecting. And, and there's lots of cool things you can see here. So 2017, Upper Deck Guardians of the Galaxy, out of 10, you can see here, uh, hashtag or serial number out of 10. So that's an interesting thing to look at. I'm not too keen on these, personally. They're from the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 2 movie, and they're out of 10, but they have no significance for me personally, and I think most people would agree. Uh, there are some actually cool ones, but... They're no longer listed, <laughs> so they've been bought up. Um, so you can see here, you've got a triple relic, uh, triple retro diamond relic, sorry, uh, from the Black Diamond set, $639, and $639, and it's numbered out of 18. Uh, you've got Chris Pratt there, again, which is numbered out of 23. And again, I've talked about these um, exquisite cards, people buying these left, right, center, and quite a Good idea, I think, to be fair. Uh, you can see there's all different colouring, uh, which is interesting. But that's not what we're looking at right now. So where can we find a good buy? What makes sense, I guess, is what I'm asking. So 
we've got Kaleidoscope here. The numbers uh, in terms of you know dollar amount for Kaleidoscope has gone up massively. Two hundred sixty-five dollars now for an out of twenty-five from the two thousand eighteen Marvel masterpieces. Again, I think they are wicked, wicked um, cards and uh, are loved by everyone. So, no brainer for me. So, I talked, I touched on Premiere a little bit um, in my top ten video on Monday. If you haven't seen that, please check it out. Uh, I do that every Monday where I go through top ten Marvel card sales. But I touch on Premier just slightly. So this is a Premier card from 2019, uh, the latest kind of Premier set. Hopefully there's going to be one this year, all being well. And it's numbered out of 30. So low numbered card, $100. So I'm just going to click on this. This is a good, it is a great example of what we can do here. So I like the colour match of these cards. Matches this suit, looks cool. The borders are a little bit hit and miss. I know some people don't like it, but, you know, is what it is. So number one thing to do if you're looking at purchasing a card through ComC is check what it looks like. I mean, check the corners, check any surface issues. So again, they're scans of cards, so you've got to be careful. Um, but the most important thing is, is you're checking the serial number adds up, ties up with what the title is. Uh, are there any notes? Sometimes people put notes here, so they may say near mint or surface issues uh, down here. Or up here, sorry. Um, so yeah, just be careful with that and check out any issues that my card might have. Make sure it's in good condition. This looks pretty neat. I mean, again, it's hard to tell. I must say, the majority of cards I've bought from Comstein have got back. I've never had, and this is my personal experience. Doesn't mean it's going to be, uh, you know, a wide range. But I've never had any problems. I've only had one card that's got a bit of a soft edge, uh, so I've never really had any uh, real issues with. Buying cards from ComC. Uh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by ComC. <laughs> ComC, if you're listening, holler at me. You know, I'm joking. But um, I'm not sponsored by ComC. But nevertheless, really like it. So what I would do in this situation, let's have a look at offers. Oh, God, it's going to come up with some of my stuff i got in my basket. No, it's not. It's all good. So I've got $13 in my basket. I want to get a sense of... I want to offer something, right? Obviously not thirteen. I'm not going to get anything for thirteen dollars. But just give you a, you know, a heads up on what you can do. So I'm going to send an offer of one and see what it comes back with. Okay. So the minimum for this offer for this card is fifty dollars. So they've got it listed for a hundred, but they may accept an offer of fifty. And I use that word may. <laughs> Many of them do not. They will counter offer with likely sixty, sixty-five, seventy. But that's something that you'll learn over time is put a little bit more than the lowest offer. I think that would be my advice. A lot of people have a kind of like 5% lower than the asking price as a kind of a minimum um, across all their listings. So they're the people that just, yeah, ask for their lowest and they're likely to accept because they've already said, all right, I don't want to sell any lower than this. In this scenario, you know, you're likely to get this, what well, they've listed as a $100 card for 60 potentially. So I hope that makes sense and do make use of that. I find that I use that a lot um, when I'm looking at cards to buy. So yeah, potentially that's a good buy, but out of 30, Premier, again, is it worth it? I like these. These are cool. Infinity War, Reddit, uh, Reality Stones, and then go. This is from the... Um, Infinity War film. Um, so that's interesting. So yeah, lots of stuff there. You can see the blue is out of 50 there for the premiere. $20. Can I get that for $13? <laughs> if, I, if I do, it'll be a miracle. So let's put in $10. Oh, damn! So $15.25 is the minimum amount. <sighs> sucks but they're the kind of like cheeky plays that you can you know you can you can get into if you can get into a serial card less you know less than 50 in the world of that star lord card and again there are lower serial numbers don't get me wrong but if you can get something for 15 dollars less than you know less than 50 in the world that to me the way the marvel cards is growing the way the hobby is growing you know fanatics taking over 
uh, all these big companies, tops, um, it could be Panini next, but, you know, will they take over the upper deck? There's all sorts of these questions, but there's so much, um, so much good stuff happening in the hobby. I've For me, that makes sense. But again, completely speculative. I just want to balance that out, I guess. Uh, 2018, Marvel Masterpiece Hollow Force Speckle out of 99. Not bad. Um, Vibranium there. And this is the other premiere out of 100, which is more, <laughs> more expensive. Mm. Um, another exquisite there. Pack Wars. I don't really like these. I've... I've done some research on them. Not my cup of tea. Uh, but again, everyone is different. So, yeah. So that's kind of what I would do if I'm looking at a particular character. Um, maybe Starla was a bad example. But um, and let's say you're looking at... Let's say you're looking at a set. Let's use 2017 Upper Deck Marvel Premiere as an example and again just to clarify if any of you might be thinking i'm <laughs> i'm pushing premiere i have one premiere card in my collection um so that is not the case i just wanted to use this as a good example and again hopefully to provide you with some value so let's change this to um print run and obviously the sketch cards are going to be coming up first and again not to say that these sketch cards aren't a buy, uh, far from it. Again, I don't know enough about the sketch cards to to give my opinion. And again, I will buy a sketch card at some point this year, but it needs to be something special. Uh, but they are underrated. There are many out there that are massively underrated. That's a nice she-help. Uh, so let's go down to the serial numbered stuff, um, just as an example. So you've got a Century out of five, Lady Sif out of five. Are they characters? And this is where my mindset works. And again, this isn't to say this is the right way. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be transparent as possible uh, and kind of give you some tools to, to fish with, I guess, is what I'm trying to get to. So they're not characters I would be buying um, if I'm looking at I mean, from an investment standpoint. If I'm a, a century collector, then it doesn't matter. You, you just buy it and get it for uh, whatever the amount will be. So... Here's an interesting one. You've got Iron Man out of 15, which is a um, busk die-cut gold foil. These are cool. And you've got a Mysterio out of 15, which is, again, gold foil out of 15, which is $50. So the disparity between the two is massive. Why? Because that's Iron Man and that's Mysterio. Is that too cheap? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But I would, I would personally be looking at eBay and sold listings completed listings the, as just using this as an example and seeing what's been said and what the prices have been for various characters of these gold foils out of 15 in the last three months for example and seeing if that is a good price and can you make an offer to get that even lower potentially so that's one thing i think about is there is there something to be looking at potentially there i don't know i don't think and again i've used that as an example i don't think these cards are super sweet i think they're cool and again i'm a big fan of die cuts but um i don't think they'll get the love purely because of the way they look um again i talked about color match four look at this this is awesome storm storm blue and the gray oh just looks sick doesn't it does look sick so let's try and find a bargain so this one's out of 50 storm and again i'm all about the characters this one's out of 50 hulk Jean Grey out of 50, Groot out of 50. Um, so Colossus, someone's put, uh, this is kind of like someone's marked it down. So let's go into this just to show you. So someone's put their Colossus out of 50, marked it down to 28. So if you ever see this kind of green uh, kind of label, someone's put it on offer. And again, these, just interestingly, these don't say out of 50 on the description here. So you need to be checking if you don't know your stuff and you might, you know, might get lost on sets like I do all the time. You want to be checking that it is serial number. This one is. So if let's have a look. See if I can make an offer of $12. And you're going to be thinking I'm taking the 
piss. Uh, there you go. So the minimum offer is $20. So you could potentially get that card for $20. The next card in terms of value is $32. So again, it's an opportunity. Colossus is a bad example. Let's have a look at what else we can find. Cable, Ultron, and again, it's all about, it's all dependent on character. So as you see, Black Panther's uh, out of 50 is $90 there. Vision out of 50, $25. Black, Black Widow at 50, $70. So I'm just scanning, scanning in my mind. What is a play? So this is an interesting one. And these are the kinds of things I think about. This is Thor, but obviously this is kind of Jane Foster. So Will, and again, I've looked at some Easter egg kind of YouTube videos and things like that, but will um, Thor eventually be a lady? Uh, based, I, I mean, I think I'm right. Based on the comic books, I think the answer is yes. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, when a new Thor is chosen to protect Earth and Asgard, Jane Foster embraces the opportunity. So yeah, I believe it was based on one of the comics. But that's an interesting play for me. Is that a long-term buy? Absolutely. Is it uh, Is it? Uh, wait until what happens in the movie and then, you know, Jane Foster gets some love in terms of cards? Maybe. I don't know. Loki... See, for me, that doesn't make any sense. So a blue foil Loki out of 50, who is, in my opinion, a, one of the top tier characters. You've got Black Panther at 50, you've got Black Widow at 70, and then you've got Loki at 30. That, to me, doesn't make any sense. So that's the kind of thing I would be looking at my... And again, it all depends on the artwork. Like, is that cool artwork? Is it nice, cool colour match, in my opinion? That's a nice card. Numbered out of 50. Condition looks meh. Something on the right-hand corner there. Interesting play. How much can we get it for, potentially? And again, I own now $13, so <laughs> doubt I'll be getting that. $22.75. So... Let's say you get it for twenty two seventy five, and then you relisted it for around this mark, seventy dollars. Because I would, I personally would put Loki on par with Black Widow, Black Panther, and you know, who else could I uh, compare with on the previous page? You know, Groot is more than Loki. <laughs> Jean Grey is more than Loki. Juggernaut's more than Loki. And again, these are all, like, they may be just one card, one seller. So don't get me wrong, there are so many disparities that, that that's why the price is what it is. But stuff like that, for me, makes that Loki a buy. Um, you know, it's not going to be the last we see of Loki in MCU. Uh, he's going to be reappearing somewhere. You know, the Disney Plus uh, series was great. And people loved that. So Loki, again, in the limelight, uh, even now. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is completely speculative. But they're the kind of things that I look at on a daily basis, So if I'm honest with you guys. Um, and again, I'm not spending lots and lots and lots of dollars. I do not have that. So, it's looking for those little little areas that you can think, okay, well, if that character's doing this, and that that's the price of this then maybe there's something there. And again, when you relist it, don't expect to be selling it in five minutes. It could well sit there for two months. And that's definitely happened to me several times. It's three months, six months. Like, But, you know, if you wanted to continuously do that and kind of play it like that, you could. It's, you could. Um, let's see what else we can get. I did really want to get something for $13. Um of a decent character that potentially is going to come out in an MCU movie, uh, in a movie or Disney Plus series. So these out of one two fives, you know, ugh. 
they could be a play, but yeah, they're, t they're, they're probably too much for my liking. But they look wicked. That Rocket Raccoon is very nice. Do like Rocket Raccoon as a character, you know. But the thing that looks like things like Baby Groot, you know, Groot, um, all interesting things. Mmm, Mystique, blue and blue looks good. But yeah, I hope that gives you <laughs> something. Yeah. You can put dislike if you really didn't like this episode, but you know. That's some of the things I think about. And um, again, I hope you got some value from this. You might have learned something new, maybe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button for more Marvel card content to come.